We have new reporting this morning from CNN in collaboration with the Global Health Reporting Center about a Texas doctor driven by a deep personal connection traveling all the way here to Ukraine to help local doctors treat the wounded of war, both soldiers and civilians. Our doctor, Sanjay Gupta, joins us now with a remarkable story. Hey, Jim. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the, the misery of what's happening in Ukraine. 2,000 civilians at least now killed and many more, many more wounded. Every time we see those booms and explosions on television, there are people who are then rushing in to try and help the injured, try and save their lives, often at risk uh, to their own lives. Dr. Manzi Yazji is one of those people, and here's a little bit of his story. Whenever I travel to the war zones and I leave uh, my home, always I do one-way ticket. Dr. Manzer Yazji is getting ready for a journey he's made before. His third trip from his home in Edinburgh, Texas to Eastern Ukraine. As a physician first, us, it's our duty and our ethics to help every needed person in the world. I understand that feeling. I've been in war zones and disaster zones as a reporter. Monzer and I were in Haiti at the same time in 2010. At times, I have felt compelled to help. How much do you worry now about your own safety? Every time I go back, I say this is maybe the last time I'll be going. Because when I decide to come, it's a lot of fear. And then in a minute, I just remember my promise and why the people lost their life and I see their children not seeing them. And we work in different cities. Dr. Yazji, a Syrian-American, ran over 30 medical missions since 2011 to help his homeland during the catastrophic war there. But even as the conflicts continue in Syria, he finds himself in a similar situation in another country. What happened in Ukraine, it happened in Syria. And I feel myself that I am part of them. Nearly two months of war and at least 119 attacks on clinics and hospitals have left the Ukrainian health system in disarray and desperately in need of outside help. The hospitals, which have been, uh, which been attacked by the Russian army. Uh, physician to physician. Dr. Yazji spends the next five days in an almost constant blur of action. I wonder if you can just sort of describe what you're encountering. Is there not enough care to be given? A lot of high complexity surgeries. Trauma, like we did a surgery uh, in Monday, like for a person lost half of the upper, uh, posterior upper shoulder, the uh, upper arm, the chest, the upper chest. This man survived. There are issues with water and electricity. There are shortages of medical supplies. Performing as many as half a dozen operations in a day what Dr. Yazji and his Ukrainian colleagues are doing is, in the context of things, nothing short of miraculous. One thing he learned in Syria is the need to perform skin grafts as soon as possible to reduce the risk of infection. This is the most challenging, really, kind of surgery because the more, the faster you cover the bone, you facilitate healing and prevent infection. These are patients who've been injured in these, these explosions that we've been witnessing on, on television. They may lose skin, they may have fractured bones, they may need amputations, and so you're, you're talking about creating flaps to try, and, to try and care for them, is that right? We really save the amputation hour. You make a big difference in people's life. Dr. Yazji doesn't just provide medical support, though. He provides a form of mental nourishment to the Ukrainian doctors as well. When I see a Ukrainian doctor suffering, because, you know, he's exhausted, mentally, physically, and the attack on them, I see us, ourselves, we were there. That why this is all make me come to Ukraine and be with them. The morning after our call, he started for home, but leaving with a promise that he will be back. Got to tell you, Jim, so, you know, he started doing these medical missions in Syria uh, back in 2011, done 30 of them since then. And people were asking me, even as we were reporting this piece, uh, you know, how long did that conflict last? And as you well know, Jim, it goes on. That's one of the points uh, Dr. Yaji wanted me to make, is that sometimes there's obviously a lot of attention on things at the time, uh, but the attention goes away. But that doesn't mean these conflicts end, and uh, he's still going back and forth, as you just heard, Jim.